An astrolabe is an astrological device dating back as far as the 6th century that was prominent in medieval Europe. The word astrolabe originates from the Greek words astron and lambanian, meaning the one who catches the heavenly bodies. The astrolabe had many functions, but was primarily used in the studies of cosmological events or understanding of the heavens. As historian of science J.D. North points out, the astrolabe is a scientific instrument of the Middle Ages used for both astronomical and terrestrial observations. It also served as an analog computer, particularly for determining the local time. The astrolabe is commonly referred to as the planispheric astrolabe, measuring from 8 to 46 centimetres and usually made from metal, either brass or iron, and composed of various discs, engravings and rulers. While unique in its construction, the astrolabe has a compact round structure featuring five distinct functional elements. The throne is located on top of the device, usually equipped with a ring or cord, making it easy to hold vertically when it is pointed in the direction of the sun or a star. The limb is divided up into quadrants, which, when pointed with a ruler, measures the time scaled in hours and degrees. The plate is engraved to distinguish different latitudes, which are usually specified with two or three engraved plates on both sides of the device. Circles for tropics and the equator are also visible on the plate, as it provides useful information on altitude. The rate identifies the elliptical longitude as it rotates around the axis. The ruler is used to point at a value or position on the limb or plate. Astrolabes were utilised by academics and astronomers to make accurate measurements of the position of celestial objects, the time of day or night, the time of year, altitude of any objects across the horizon, current latitude, and information on what part of the sky is visible at any time of the day with accurate orientation. The astrolabe was also utilised to schedule time for prayer and worship through Islam's five daily prayers by the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad. So not only was the astrolabe used as a means of collecting scientific calculations, it was also used traditionally within the Islamic faith. While the Chaucer astrolabe was portable like the planispheric astrolabes, it maintains similar elements and functions to the larger scale model. Currently residing in the British Museum is Chaucer's astrolabe, dated as being made in England during 1326. This object has been subject to much debate on surrounding its authenticity in relation to its apparent ownership by Geoffrey Chaucer. Chaucer's interest in the celestial has been well established primarily through his work The Treatise on the Astrolabe, along with many other references throughout the Canterbury Tales to astronomical devices and the celestial. In the preface of Chaucer's text, The Canterbury Tales, Chaucer presents his ideas regarding medieval education, science, technology, and languages. Chaucer makes a distinct reference to the astronomical device in his text, where he links a point in time with a particular location that corresponds to one of the zodiac signs, as presented by Erica McCulloch in the general prologue of the Canterbury Tales. Chaucer has written, at the time that April's sweet showers have pierced March's drought to the root, and the young sun has travelled halfway through the ram, as we commonly know as Aries. As Chaucer is considered by many to be one of the most important historical voices in medieval Europe, his treatise has become significant in the study of astrolabes. One of the pieces of evidence used by the British Museum to claim this specific astrolabe was owned by Chaucer is that the zoomorphic star pointers and the Y-shaped rate, as described in the treatise. This is not significant enough evidence to support this claim, and many astrolabes share these traits to the point where the Y-shaped rate is commonly referred to as Chaucerian. Stating that Chaucer's astrolabe has been found and it matches so well with the treaties legitimises the use of the treaties as a historical scientific text, which would be an important historical discovery, but given the lack of evidence, the historical discovery has yet to occur. Its supposed time and place of creation also cannot be considered evidence Chaucer owned this because it's a stretch to assume that simply because an object existed when and where a person did, said person owned it. 
While there is minimal evidence to support the claim that this is Geoffrey Chaucer's astrolabe specifically, historical communities need to attribute this astrolabe to Chaucer to contribute further to his mythos and legacy, as it does a disservice to the actual history and would ignore the need to investigate further.